Today on Pat's Car Garage we start yet another rather large project. Jeep is up on ramps for this. Uh, I might not actually end up needing it but uh, I'd rather have it up uh, now rather than try to do it later once the engine's all disassembled. So what I'm doing today is the following. So the previous owner said the Jeep goes through oxygen sensors like a middle school boy goes through pop-tarts so basically what i'm thinking is uh, the exhaust header is cracked this is a known problem on the on these engines the the straight six so uh, the plan is to remove uh, basically all of this stuff here the intake manifold uh, the intake tube all the various piping the throttle linkage get to the exhaust manifold and replace it uh, so we got a new gasket for the intake and exhaust it's got a new uh, that's an exhaust collar thing and here is the exhaust manifold so uh, this is a crown parts manifold it's basically a ripoff of the banks power manifold only 200 bucks cheaper and the thing is I've I really wanted to not do this ever again so I looked online to see which was the most reliable aftermarket header that doesn't crack anymore and what I found is the banks power does crack rarely but no one's ever complained about this one cracking so i finally went for this one also saved 200 bucks and yeah so it's nice and shiny which is great everybody loves shiny new parts okay first things first pull the valve cover breather and vapor canister hose off and place them aside next remove the air intake tubing the filter and the air box the airbox has three bolts that thread into nuts under the fender. You can easily reach those if you stick your hand in there. This is overall a fairly easy job to do. You should be able to pull it off in a weekend with minimal tools. The only difficult part is removing the bolts that hold the manifolds in place, but we will worry about that when we get there. Next up, remove the throttle body. Unsnap the linkages and set them aside. Unplug the idle air control valve and the throttle position sensor. Remove the four 10mm bolts and pop it off. The old gasket might put up a little bit of a fight. I also unplugged some of the vacuum connections around the throttle body just to clear out a little bit of space. So, I've got a rounded off bolt on the uh, accelerator cable bracket, which is just making this job a lot more annoying, so I'm gonna go ahead and struggle it, struggle with it until I find a way to remove it. Okay. After a little bit of surgery with the sawzall, I got the bracket off. Now you have to remove the fuel connections to the fuel rail. There are a few different connection styles. Mine is with the plastic quick disconnect fittings. I struggled a little bit as they were seized on, but careful prying with a screwdriver got them off. Have some rags ready to catch any dripping fuel. You should also plug the fuel line somehow to prevent junk from falling in. The next thing to do now is to remove the bolts for the fuel rail, making sure you don't drop any of them, unlike me. And then to remove the rail you can pry on it gently with the screwdriver. I tried simply wiggling it back and forth but it would not budge. As per the service manual's recommendation, I've sprayed whatever manifold bolts I could reach with some penetrating oil to help get them out. I personally have had good success with PB Blaster, but use whatever you like. So the Haynes service manual doesn't make it very obvious on how to uh, loosen the, the tension on the belt on pre-auto tensioning models. So first you have to, you have to uh, loosen this top nut up here. And then after that there's two bolts behind the pump which you can loosen. You can actually see one of them right there. So there's one on top, one on the bottom, and there's also one in front which is underneath the pulley, it's hidden, you won't see it. Once you loosen all of those, then you can go at this bolt down here, counterclockwise, to relieve the tension on the belt. So now there's quite a bit less. I just gotta keep doing that and uh, eventually be loose enough to remove the belt. Once you got the belt off, simply remove the nuts and bolts holding the power steering pump on and set it aside. You need the space there so you can stick your hand under the manifolds to get at the bottom bolts. There is a bracket that holds the power steering pump which needs to be removed before you can remove the intake manifold. After that, it's just about removing the manifold bolts and it will come right off. The top ones are obviously fairly easy, but the bottom ones will be difficult to reach. They won't be hard to remove as the tightening torque isn't very high, but just that twisting your hands to get your tools lined up is annoying. 
Okay, well, there we are. There's only a few more bolts to remove to get the exhaust manifold off. I think there's three. There's that one there. There's one up there, which is covered in rust. Uh, there's one behind, and then, of course, the ones actually that go down to the exhaust pipe. So, uh, fairly close to the goal here. Sit rep. It is hot as frig outside. It's it's 36 degrees. It's completely crazy. Uh, I mean, like my shirt is like completely ruined. But that's okay. Like, who the hell cares? This shirt's going straight in the garbage can after I'm done with this job. So uh, that's removed. Uh, I need to clean up all the mounting hardware. I mean, I wanted to buy like new bolts, but uh, I have no idea what they are. I looked M8, M10, doesn't fit, or they may be SAE and not metric. Those also don't fit, so I guess I'm just gonna have to reuse these bolts. I'm gonna clean them up, put a smidgen of anti-seize on them, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have to reuse them. Luckily, I did not lose any of the washers and stuff, so when you remove the exhaust manifold, uh, be careful because those washers like to jump out and get lost. So I bought some new ones just in case, but not gonna need them. So the shiny new header is gonna go on. You have to clean up all the mounting surfaces, so intake manifold. I don't have to do the exhaust manifold since I'm replacing it. And this here, it still looks a little bit rusty, but it's perfectly flat and clean. Uh, I used a razor blade to just scrape it uh, as you go along and do the entire thing. Of course, don't forget to pull your paper towels out after you're done. Okay, well, my camera died of sudden death on that previous uh, on the previous shot, so I don't know how much of it it got. But um, so I just quickly mounted it. I snugged everything up on the bottom, on the top. I'm gonna test fit the intake manifold first before I do anything else to make sure that the intake manifold sits correctly on there and you know nothing's uh, obstructing it and so on and so forth. I'm also gonna replace the oxygen sensor uh, while I'm at it, while it's only snugged up. I just wanted it to have some support just uh, while I wrench on the O2 sensor. Once you've done whatever other things you had planned to do, it's time for reassembly. Mount the intake manifold on the dowel pins and then follow this tightening sequence of the various bolts and nuts, as well as the recommended torque figures. Now, let's be honest with ourselves here. These are the official figures, but I've got no idea how they planned on us getting a torque wrench in the engine bay. Considering also that the Jeep 4.0 is known for loosening its manifold bolts, here's what I have to say. Respect the tightening sequence, but don't bother using a torque wrench, and when you are guesstimating these figures by hand, definitely go for a little bit more than a little bit less. The rest of reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Man, that's a lot of S's. You don't need to watch me struggle putting in every manifold bolt, although that would be very entertaining for some of you. I need to keep my videos short enough for those who are actually doing this job to be able to skim through. So I will end this video here, but stick around because the Jeep will be getting more fixes and minor upgrades to make it as good as when it was brand new.